Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and I don't have any finished items. Um, the only finished item I had was that shawl. Um, I haven't worked anything on the seems like old time shawl this week at all because I've been busy sewing. So there's that. Um, I have a little bit more than two rows left to do on the blanket where people at the prayer shawl had made six inch squares and putting them together. Um, I've got to join this row, which I'm working on now. And um, wow, that's annoying. So, you know, I've got that little bit to do and joining it and just started on this row here where I'm starting to join it. And I've got two more um, sets of eight six inch squares to add to that. So it'll be a good size blanket. I have been working a little bit on my Knit Comfy Cardigan. So it's getting a little bit bigger slowly as I go. And I do mean slowly. You know, I kind of feel like a slacker when it comes to uh, doing projects because I see some of these other ladies just going like gangbusters. And, and I know that, you know, it's circumstances, whether we have the ability to do it or not, time to do it, or if we have other things we have to do. You hear that noise? That's the Roomba. It's mapping out the house. And I've decided that the Roomba is going to get some goo uh, googly eyes and some eyelashes. Um, one is probably not going to be big enough for this house. Um, otherwise, it'll be running, you know, most of the day. I mean, it's been running most of the day, and it still hasn't finished the craft room. So, yeah, there's that. So it's been a little bit interesting. Now, when you see this, there will be bags that are up in the shop, and I'm going to show you those bags now. Um, like I said, I had tons and tons of bags cut, ready to sew just hadn't been able to get to them because of things that were going on. So I've been working on getting some of those down so that, you know, I can get into some of the other fabrics that I have. But um, this first one, and I've always called it flower paisleys, and I know it's not really a paisley, but the flowers are so unique, and you get a little bit of a paisley design in there with it. Um, the interior... It's a tote bag. The interior has a purplish mauve color. And of course, you've got the pocket for, um, you know, scissors and those kind of things. Now, I thought I had more panda fabric. Only had enough to do one bag. So there is one panda bag in the bamboos. And of course, it has a leafy green interior this time and it has a pocket as well um, so yeah I really thought I had more than that but apparently I don't if I do it may be in another spot in the in the house I just haven't found it yet <laughs> so I'm still working on that now I did make two more of the mushrooms totes in the mushroom garden in their little mushroom houses one of these has the light green interior, also has the pocket. The other has a darker green, that leafy green um, interior in it. And the handles um, are made of the actual mushroom gnome fabric. These gnomes are so cute. Um, and I think that finishes out my gnomes, I'm not positive. I may have another one somewhere. 
this next one, I love this print. Butterflies, all kinds of butterflies. Aren't they gorgeous? The interior is a purple fabric and it has the pocket as well. And um, yeah, I just love it. Those butterflies are awful amazing. Yeah, I do have a little bit of more more of that somewhere, but I just felt two was enough. Most of these are only two that are made. The exception is the panda. There's only one. Then we get to this last bag. Pegasus in flight in the blues and purples. The tinge of white, a little bit of teal. The interior is that purple swirl fabric. And of course you have a pocket on the inside of this one as well. There are two of these. So, now I did have enough to make three drawstring bags of that fabric. So I did make three drawstring of that. But the interior on this, um, there's a little bit of a blue um, with some hints of purple in it, you know, the white, the purple. So it complements the outside of the fabric as well. And there are three of these. So that is it for the bags. Like I said, by the time you see this, they will be up in the shop and listed and ready to go. Um, that is it for what I have been up to other than still finding places to put things. Um, I kind of had a little giggle. I, I used my last check the other day to pay a bill and I went looking for the box of the other checks. And they're somewhere in that garage. <sighs> Hoping I find them. <laughs> so, yeah. It's been a little bit of an interesting mystery, you know, um, but I just actually do a little prayer and ask God to show me where it's at. And generally, within that next, you know, 24 hours, boom, there it is. So, what can you say? All right, are you ready for a little what in tarnation? I love these stories this week. Love every one of them. Man finds one million pennies while cleaning out home. Can you imagine? That's like $10,000 worth of pennies, I think. I think. A family cleaning out their home in Los Angeles stumbled upon several bags containing one million pennies. John Reyes said he was cleaning out his father-in-law's home when he made the discovery. The bags of pennies were unopened, sealed bank bags. That's rather interesting in itself. I've actually been contacted by a few coin collectors or people who specialize in this space. And just based off some of the questions they asked me, for example, having the lead sealed bag or having bags from banks we don't necessarily recognize, knowing that they are at least 40 years old or more, I've had quite a few collectors tell me that is something that shouldn't be sold until we know what is going on, he told Fox 11. According to the New York Post, family determined that the coins are copper and not zinc, which the United States switched to in the 1980s. Reyes has listed the coins on OfferUp, a resale website, asking for 25000 the value is in the uniqueness, he said. I would imagine if he went through and looked at some of those coins, he might be surprised at what kind of money just one coin would fetch. So, but it's his choice, right? Alligator wanders into South Carolina Fire Station. Firefighters in South Carolina said they ejected an unwanted visitor after an alligator wandered into their station. The Awanda McClellanville Consolidated Fire District said in a Facebook post that firefighters at Fire Station 4 in McClellanville found the gator. The district shared a photo of the 
alligator wandering near a fire engine parked inside the station. Alligators are a big part of the low country ecosystem and are frequently seen outside of firehouses, the district said. The alligator was ushered outside without any, any issues, officials wrote. California researchers encounter unusually large group of orcas. Marine researchers in California were treated to a unique experience when they came across an unusually large pod of orcas composed of up to 24 killer whales. I don't know why they still call them killer whales. Michael Pearson of Oceanic Society said he and his fellow researchers set out on a whale watching tour near the Farallon Islands and decided to deviate from their usual route. So they approached the islands from the south. Pearson said the group spotted a blue whale and a pot of humpbacks before he spotted an orca's dorsal fin poking out from the top of the water. The researchers were soon shocked to be surrounded by up to 24 orcas, including several mother and child bears and multiple adult males. Just seeing them is always really exciting, but seeing such a large grouping was what made it a one-of-a-kind experience. Alisa Shulman Jenniger, lead research biologist with the California Killer Whale Project and Monterey Bay Whale Watch, identified the whales spotted from the boat. She said at least six different families were represented. It was such a fascinating encounter in that it was such an unusually high number and an unusual mix. If you see one of those families, you'd think another family would come up, but it was a real mix of whales that were unrelated and are typically not seen with each other at all. She said it is difficult to determine what caused the unusual grouping of orcas to come together on that day of the tour. She said they may have been preparing to hunt, investigating something unusual, or merely socializing. We know they form long-term friendships and associations, but there's no way for us to know why they're getting out of it, she said. This next apartment, let me get a drink. <clears throat> Allergies have been pretty bad this week, so <clears throat> going to have to excuse the throat. Sorry about that. Troll apartment in the middle of Los Angeles Bridge listed for $250,000. A listing for a one-bedroom, one-bathroom house in Los Angeles is going viral, both for its $250,000 price, $250, price tag and its unusual location, the middle of a bridge. The Alhambra House, dubbed the Troll Apartment, online, is located beneath the road and over the arch of a bridge overlooking the Alhambra Wash. It's definitely the most unique listing I've ever had in my entire residential real estate career. Douglas Lee, the sales associate handling the property for Compass Real Estate, told KTLA TV. The house features a rooftop patio, a fenced-in area adjacent to the street that runs over the bridge. There's a lot of just unique interest, Lee said. And instead of it being off-putting to people, it's actually come off as very unique and cool. Lee said the current owner purchased the house in 2005 with the intention of making it into a unique gateway getaway, but ended up only using the property for storage. He said the house is in need of some repairs, including outlet upgrades, leak repairs, and about 3000 in mold abatement. It's a fixer-upper. We don't know how responsive the market would be. We didn't. Lee said the house is one of only 12, 11 properties in Los Angeles County listed for 250000 or less. Wow. You gotta love kitties and puppies that get into strange situations. This next one's rather interesting. Getting rescued from vent pipe in Philadelphia family's fireplace. 
Philadelphia family heard the cries of a trapped kitten inside their home ended up cutting through a pipe in their fireplace to rescue the feline. Cass Whistler posted a video to TikTok showing the rescue of the kitten that became trapped in their fireplace bent pipe. Whistler's husband, John, and son, Nate, helped knock a hole in the wall near the fireplace and used clippers to cut through the pipe to reach the kitten. The family decided to foster the kitten, a rare male calico. The cat was named Murph in honor of Navy SEAL Medal of Honor recipient, Lieutenant Michael Murphy, and given the middle name, Danger. Dear, they have a way of uh, changing our lives and the way we think about things, don't they, sometimes? Deer crashes through New Jersey home, swims in backyard pool. A deer crashed through a window in a New Jersey woman's home and took a dip in her backyard pool before being removed by animal control. Diane Torsky, 85, said she was at her East Windsor home when she heard a crashing noise coming from downstairs. I heard a glass explosion and then I heard a gouse that was shaking and banging, and I'm sure it was an earthquake, she just told WCAU-TV. Tversky looked downstairs and discovered a deer was ransacking her home. She called her grandson, her son, and daughter-in-law, who called 911. Her grandson, Mark Tversky, said he didn't believe it until he arrived at the house and saw the deer with his own eyes. Animal control officers opened the back door of the home and the deer quickly darted out and made its way to the pool. The deer jumped in and was all along that back wall, along where the ladder is, Mark Torsky said. It was doggy paddling all the way to the ladder. Animal control officers helped the deer out of the pool and released it back into the wild. Now, when you watch that video, um, Mark uses some foul language in it, so keep that in mind when you're watching it, if you have little ones around. Three, and in honor of us duckers, as in my sister and I, who blinged out proper duckies to hide on the ship when we went on our cruise, this next story comes. Three men swept out to sea on giant inflatable duck. Marine rescuers in England said a paddle boarder came to the assistance of three men who drifted out to sea on an inflatable duck. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution, Institution's Appledore Station said volunteers were conducting training exercises. Tuesday, when they received word that three men who had floated away from Westward Hill Beach on a giant inflatable duck. <laughs> Friend in a kayak attempted to push the duck to shore, but the unusual flotation device was soon more than 650 feet from the shore. The rescuers who were still on their way to the scene when a man on a paddleboard ventured out to tow the inflatable back to the beach. The battle boarder was able to bring the duck close enough to shore for the three men to jump out and return to the beach. The inflatable was then blown back out to sea. The duck was retrieved by the RNLI volunteers who dubbed the inflatable quackers and joked it was their new apprentice crew member. With the strong tides and offshore breezes of the Bristol Channel, Appledore RNLI urges people never to take an inflatable toy into the sea. There is no way to control these, and they get pulled out from shore within seconds. And I'm sure this, this, uh, these three fellows learned a valuable lesson. <clears throat> now, you know I grew up in New Mexico, so I love all things alien. And I love this next story. Is it aliens? We'll never know. Because if the government never tells us, how are we ever going to find out? 
Las Vegas family claims to see aliens after several report something falling from the sky. A Las Vegas family claims something crashed in their backyard, prompting them to call 911 about non-human beings. The thing is, this time, several people saw it. On April 30th, around 11.50 p.m., a Las Vegas Metro Police Officer's body camera video recorded as something streaked low across the sky. Several people across eastern California, Nevada, and Utah reported seeing the flash, according to the American Meteor Society. Sources tell the eight news now investigators that it is likely something did crash into the yard. But exactly what remained unclear more than a month later. Drone video showed a circular imprint in the dirt. About 40 minutes later, a man called 911, saying he and his family saw something fall from the sky and that there were two moving things in his Northwest Valley backyard. Caller, there's like an eight-foot person beside it, and another one is inside it, and it has big eyes, and it's looking at us, and it's still there, the caller told a dispatcher. Dispatcher, okay, where is this on your property? Caller, in my backyard. I swear to God, this is not a joke. This is actually, we're terrified. Dispatcher, so there's two people. There's two subjects in your backyard. Caller, correct. And they're very large. They're like eight foot, nine feet, ten foot. They look like aliens to us. Big eyes. They have big eyes. Like I can't explain it. And a big mouth. They're shiny eyes and they're human well, they're 100% not human. Dispatcher, okay. The Metro Police call log the 8 News Now investigators obtained shows several other family members confirmed the sighting to police. The dispatcher sent two officers to the home to investigate. The 8 News Now investigators obtained body cam video from both of the officers. I'm so nervous right now, one officer said as he's preparing to drive to the house. I have butterflies, bro. Saw a shooting star and now these people say there's aliens in their backyard. Officers arrived at the home about a half hour after the 911 call. What did you see? One officer asked a witness. It was like a big creature, one witness said. A big creature? What the officer asked. Yeah. More than 10 feet tall, the witness replied. I'm not going to BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky, too, the officer said. So that's why I'm kind of curious. Did you see anything land in your backyard? The video shows one officer walking into the backyard to investigate. But Metro Police block, blacked out that part of his body camera video citing privacy laws. I don't believe it, but what I saw right now, I do believe in it, the witness told police. You guys seem like legit scared, so I don't blame you, an officer replied. Around the same time, another witness told police they saw an SUV circling in the area. While one officer is investigating in the backyard, a second officer is talking to neighbors driving by. This might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? An officer asked a passenger in a passing car. I would normally discount it, as it's probably not real, but... However, seeing as one of my partners said they saw it too, the only reason I'm investigating it further. Metro Police investigation turned up no concrete answers as of Wednesday. While initially open for several days, the department has since closed the case. Family said officials returned to the home over several days to investigate. Hey, if those nine-foot beings come back, don't call us, all right? An officer said as he walks away from the house and back to his cruiser. Representatives from nearby Creech and Nellis Air Force bases 
said they were not involved in the incident and suggested contacting Metro Police. Spokesperson for the Pentagon did not immediately respond to questions regarding the event. So, like I said, we may never know what happened. Sorry, folks, I'm reaching for the devotional. So we may never know what it actually was, but it's a rather interesting story, don't you think? Maybe they are among us. All right. That is it for the podcast. And now we are going to get to the devotional. I am reading it out of a...